What is hyperkyphosis? The spine in its natural and healthy form normally has curves and the curves help make this help make the spine stronger. It enables flexibility and movement with the spine and it facilitates the spine absorption to gravity and distributes mechanical stress that's occurred during activity. Now, each section of the spine has a characteristic curve type. The cervical spine, the thoracic spine, and the lumbar spine all have their individual curve type that's associated with them. And of course, the cervical spine is being the neck, the thoracic spine is in the middle and the upper back, and then the lumbar spine is considered the lower back. Now, when we look at the curve types, we know there's two different kinds. There's something called kyphosis, which is a spinal curvature that bends towards the back of the body, and then the lordosis that bends towards the front of the body. And each of these curvatures are associated with the specific area. In the cervical spine and lumbar spine, we typically want to see a lordosis to occurring. And in the thoracic spine, we want to see a kyphosis. If we see an opposite curve type, in those areas that I just mentioned, that is considered to be abnormal. Now, we know also when we look at these curve types that there are ranges for them to be considered healthy. A cervical lordosis, lumbar lordosis, and a thoracic kyphosis all have healthy ranges. And those healthy range could vary some depending on the person and their anatomy and the way, the way their body developed, but there always is considered a healthy range. A cervical lordosis would fall somewhere between 20 and 40 degrees for a healthy range. In the lumbar lordosis, we're looking between 40 and 60 degrees. In a healthy range for a thoracic kyphosis is between 20 and about 45 degrees. If a person's curvature falls, all, falls within this normal range, we say the biomechanics of that curvature is preserved, the body is uh, reacting and distributing forces properly, and everything is functioning the way we want it to function. However, if a person's curvatures fall outside of this normal range, this is when problems start to occur. In a thoracic spine, we typically see something that's called hyperkyphosis. And hyperkyphosis is when the thoracic kyphosis is in excess of 50 degrees or greater. This is when the kyphosis starts getting too rounded. This is commonly known as rounded back or excessive roundly back. And we can see this in a very significant posture change that causes a rounding of the upper back and shoulders and tends to fall forward. Now, when we look at hyperkyphosis, we know there's many different types of hyperkyphosis, but by far the most common type of hyperkyphosis is something that we call postural kyphosis. This is normally caused by chronic or poor posture. This can happen in children or adults. The problem is, is that the longer a kyphosis sits there, sits there, the more structural it becomes, and the more structural it becomes, the more significant the kyphosis becomes, and the stiffer the spine becomes. It becomes harder to correct any hyperkyphosis that occurs. Also, if the hyperkyphosis is occurring in adolescence, it can lead to other types of deformities that occur in the spine and in the rib cage. It can lead to rib cage deformities and sternal deformities that could be harder to correct once a patient goes out of their growth spurt and into adolescent stage. We also know there's something called congenital kyphosis or congenital hyperkyphosis, and this is when one of the bones of the spine doesn't develop properly and it develops into a wedge shape, causing a hyperkyphosis to occur at birth. And then the last one is something we call Sherman's kyphosis, which is not caused because of congenital malformation is caused because during growth the bones grow abnormally and they don't grow into full rectangles but into wedge-shaped vertebra and it normally happens in a series of segments of a uh, series of vertebra maybe two or three or four in a certain area and causes a Sherman's kyphosis in this in this area this is normally diagnosed in adolescent range now all these kyphosis have the same characteristic excessive rounding now just like any other spinal condition in order for the spine to function properly, it needs to have its proper alignment. So the sooner you treat these spinal misalignments, the better response you're, you're gonna get. So treating hyperkyphosis early and addressing the structural deviation that's occurring can normally improve the patient, the results in, in the condition over time. As hyperkyphosis gets bigger, it becomes more difficult to treat and it starts affecting the body in more negative ways. In adolescence, most patients with hyperkyphosis feel no discomfort 
discomfort or no pain as a result of the hyperkyphosis. But as you move into the adult form, hyperkyphosis can be associated with pain and problems and functional issues. So we always recommend treating the curve as soon as it's diagnosed because the sooner you treat hyperkyphosis, normally the better results that you're gonna get. The younger the patient, the smaller the hyperkyphosis, the better the results. Here at Scotus Reduction Center, we treat hyperkyphosis by addressing it structurally and actually reducing the cause of what's causing the dysfunction and the postural deviation as opposed to just treating the symptoms of hyperkyphosis. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.